Hey y'all, I'm Zachary Fisher, a curriculum developer at Avixa. Today we're going to talk about how to build a loudspeaker out of junk and learn a little bit about the relationship of electricity and magnetism along the way. But before we get to building a speaker, let's step back and learn about how a speaker works. To do that, we need to talk about that relationship between electricity and magnetism. The relationship between the two was discovered by this guy, Hans Christian Orsted. In the 1820s, he discovered the relationship between electrical signals and magnetic fields when he had an ordinary magnetic compass near a wire. Here we have a compass next to a wire. Now I'm going to run current through it. Wow, like magic, the compass moved when I had current running through my wire. It didn't move all that much, but now we know there is a relationship between electricity and magnetism. And we can heighten that effect if we coil the wire to concentrate the magnetic field produced by our copper wire. That's pretty amazing. And just think about this. Orsted's discovery in the early 19th century has a profound impact on our lives today. The computer, tablet, or phone that you're viewing this on right now would not have been possible without Orsted proving the relationship between electricity and magnetism. But how does this help us build a speaker? Well, a speaker harnesses that relationship to convert electric energy into acoustic energy. There are other parts in a speaker you buy from a store, but there are really three main components of a speaker, a cone to push the air, a high-powered magnet, and a voice coil, which is just a coil of wire. A speaker works, as I said, by converting an electrical signal, the signal sent by your amplifier, into acoustical energy, what you actually hear. Well, remember our compass and wire. We got movement in that case from the magnetized compass when we ran current through our wire. So we've got a way to move something at a distance, but how does that get us closer to a speaker? Now we were just sending electricity from our battery through our wire. But what happens if we put something like a musical signal through a coil of wire and place it near a high-powered magnet? Wait, what's that? It's really faint, but we can actually hear the music. It's magic. Now that's science. Remember, the electrified wire creates a magnetic field which conversely attracts and repels to and from the stationary magnet as the waveform signal is passed through it. The movement generated pushed the air along with the waveform that we can hear. Can I improve upon our rudimentary speaker? Well, if we have something very light that can push more air and attach it to the coil, it will then move according to the signal sent. We call that the voice coil. Now the musical waveform passing through the voice coil is attracted and repelled by the permanent magnet. This creates pressure waves in the air that we perceive as sound. So let's get to it. To make my speaker, I need something like a cup as a housing, a very thin wire to make the voice coil, our magnets again, and I'll need to make a paper cone. That cone will push more air which should make more pressure in the air, which in turn will make us hear the sound better. I'll first create the cone out of paper. So I have my cone, but I need a way to move it. To do that, I'll create a paper tube that fits around my magnets. Next, I'll cut down my cup. Now we need to cut down my tube so it only reaches to the bottom of the cup without my comb protruding too much from the top. And I'll glue it into place. For my voice coil, I'll wrap my wire around that tube and I'll glue it into place. I need to leave about a foot on either side to attach to my source. Now I'll set my cylindrical magnets at the center of the cup with one on the bottom to hold them in place. And I'll put the tube with my voice coil over those magnets. Now that we have our, our wire routed through our holes, I need to remove the protective coating off of this enameled wire. 
You can use sandpaper, but you can also just burn it off. Now it's time to hook up to a source and put a signal through it. I attach my leads to the sleeve and the tip of my TRS connector. I need to know everything. Know what know where I need everything. Trust me. We might not be getting the best fidelity, but we've got a primitive speaker that actually works. This makes me wonder if the reverse process would also work, where the sound waves could move this lightweight surface that is attached to a voice coil moving through a magnetic field to generate an electrical waveform representation of that sound. And with that, we have the basics of how a microphone works. Now you all know more about the relationship of electricity and magnetism, and how we can harness that relationship to create a primitive working loudspeaker out of junk. But don't let my design dictate what you do on your own. Experiment with different materials and designs. For example, here we have a loudspeaker made out of a Starbucks cup. Let your imagination run wild and have fun.